Uh, an interesting uh, piece on Elon Musk uh, in the Washington Post over the weekend. I think that piece uh, ran on Saturday. It says that Musk's problems at Twitter are what they say is tarnishing his reputation as a genius. It also says that visitors to Twitter often wait for more than an hour before being called in to see Musk. They're instructed not to speak until Musk does. And he's sometimes watching YouTube videos during the meetings. Now, the report comes as Tesla's stock price has now plunged 46% since the Twitter deal closed. Joining us right now is Hope King, Axios business reporter. Hope, give us some hope. I don't know. I'm still uh, holding out hope. I'm not, I'm not holding out hope. I, I think the man's still, you know, pretty smart. Genius? I don't, we can, we can, I'm sure people can debate the, the phrase genius. But, um, and maybe we can argue. I, we can't even argue. I think the Twitter thing was a mistake. He would say it was a mistake. But I don't know. Do you get do you get a mulligan here and there? Oh, good morning, and thank you for having me on. Hope you guys both had a, a good holiday. I mean, I think stories are dependent on the time frame in which we're looking at them, right? So, right now, he's for sure uh, not holding up uh, his end of the bargain and, and the promise that he had said that he would deliver for Twitter. But you know, maybe a year from now, when we talk, maybe the story will be very, very different. So, I think uh, the story over the weekend from the Washington Post is is correct in saying that his reputation is in question. And I think the big picture for me is that it's coming into question at a really, at the worst time for him. Uh, all of the macro conditions, you know, not only here in the U.S., but also abroad are in against him, his, his favor, right? I mean, you look at right. China. I mean, that's a story that's not going away. That market uh, for EVs is the largest in the world. Market share for Tesla there is down year over year, as it is here in the U.S. So so his reputation uh, when it comes to Twitter is impacting his reputation across all of his companies. Well, let's talk about that reputation. So, look, we can. I, I would have always argued that Tesla, he would have argued that Tesla was overvalued to begin with. So, you know, we've seen it come down and a lot of people have been hurt in the process. I appreciate that. But the, the larger piece that I'm always, I've been curious about since he bought Twitter is actually how the, the reputation at Twitter ultimately impacts the other businesses from a consumer standpoint, from a regulatory standpoint. And, uh, you know, when you think about SpaceX, they, they require, uh, you know, Defense Department contracts, uh, both in the U.S., I imagine, elsewhere. So how the reputational piece of all of this comes into play may matter to everything else. I mean, he is just talking too much, right? He's talking too much on spaces. You and I were on the same spaces together, I believe, you know, a yep. couple of days ago where he promised that he wasn't going to sell any more stock. He's leaving open all of this room for critique, for analysis, for the world to weigh in. And I think that's where he is being, that's where he is showing that he is most vulnerable because he's making himself so vulnerable. So the other piece of this is, in, and I, we were both on the, the spaces. Mm -hmm. This was a, a conversation he had about you know how many shares he had sold and how many plan shares he planned to sell said basically I'm, I'm basically when i was listening to it said he, he was not planning to sell shares for two years and then sort of allowed for maybe in a year I, I don't i don't know where you sort of took that but we'll see what happens over the next year my question is if he's not going to do that do, do you really believe that this business will be cash flow positive or at least um he'll be, you know he'd have to be break even at least for the next year and what does it do in terms of his ability to, I thought he was going to try to buy, buy some uh, more shares, probably cram down his either other investors or buy some of the debt at a discount. I don't know if he can still do that if he's not going to be selling more shares. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I think, again, just depending on the timeline we're talking about here, maybe in a year it, we're not going to get there. Uh, but maybe in two years. I mean, I think one of the, the best analogies that I've heard about you know, Elon taking over really is that you have the basically the Mr. Beast of YouTube taking over Twitter. And I know he's made a lot of comparisons to YouTube. You, you know, you just talked about how he's obsessed with watching it. And if the biggest creator on Twitter can make the product more attractive for more Twitter creators, for more YouTube creators, I mean, that's where maybe some of that hope is coming from, right? Is I know a lot of people are debating whether or not that view uh, count on, on tweets is doing anything. You know, as someone, I'm sure you've been looking at this, I've yep. been testing it. Uh, you know, as a user or someone who likes to use Twitter, I find that really helpful. I find it helpful to know people are interested in something that I'm writing, and maybe I will write more about that or tweet more about something. And so I think he is as a product manager and oh, as someone see it, I'm so hope I'm so insecure <laughs> now that now that, that the count is public